If there's any doubt whatsoever that the Republican Party has completely forfeited its claim as the party of law and order, look no further than the most powerful elected Republican in the country, Speaker Mike Johnson, openly announcing that he is deliberately editing January 6th footage to make it harder for criminal insurrectionists to be identified and prosecuted, effectively engaging in obstruction of justice. But before we unpack all that, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. All right, folks, I've got a clip to play. I just want to jump right into it. Here is Speaker Mike Johnson, the most powerful elected Republican in the United States, second in line to the presidency, a man who is supposed to be the embodiment of law and order, since he is one of the most powerful people in the party of law and order, openly announcing to the press casually that he intends to subvert law and order. The January 6th committee was a partisan exercise. Uh, they, they, they claim that it was bipartisan, but I think we all recognize that the, the two Republican members that served on that uh, committee uh, had another agenda. I, I think that what we got was a biased report. I think they hid some of the uh, important evidence. And uh, look, we want the American people to draw their own conclusions. I don't think partisan elected officials in Washington should present a narrative and expect that it should be uh, seen as, as the ultimate truth on it when we know that they hid certain elements. The release of the January 6th tapes is a critical and important uh, exercise. We want transparency. We should demand that the American people do. We trust, House Republicans trust the American people to draw their own conclusions. We should not, they should not be dictated by some narrative and accept that as fact. So they can review the tapes themselves. Uh, we're going through a methodical process of releasing them as quickly as we can. As you know, we have to blur some of the faces of persons who uh, participated in, in, uh, in the events of that day because we don't want them to be retaliated against and, uh, and, and, and to be charged by the DOJ and, and to have other uh, you know, concerns and problems. So uh, that's a slow process to get it done. We're working steadily on it. We've hired additional personnel to do that. And uh, all of those tapes ultimately at the end will, will be out so everybody can see them and draw their own conclusions. That's the dumbest, most incoherent, most cynical thing that Mike Johnson has ever said. And Mike Johnson has said some spectacularly stupid and dishonest and cynical things. So he simultaneously says the January 6th Select Committee was a biased report, allegedly bipartisan, but the two Republicans were, quote unquote, air Republicans, rhinos, Republicans in name only. We want to release the full, unbiased report, the full unbiased record, nothing that's driven by narrative. We want full transparency. But also, it's going to be a minute before we can get you the footage because we have to deliberately in post-production edit the material to blur the faces of the criminal insurrectionists so they can't be identified and prosecuted by the Justice Department. These All of those things are mutually exclusive, period. There is no rational, logical argument to the contrary. Mike Johnson simultaneously says what we previously got was biased. It was edited. It selectively altered things. We want full transparency, but also we're going to selectively alter things. We're not going to be transparent, and we too have a narrative. The New Republic talked about this as well. The blur could also be an attempt to stop armchair sleuths on the internet from identifying the rioters, a process that could help expedite the lengthy investigation required to process more than 40,000 hours of footage and put names and histories to the 2,000 rioters in attendance that day. Johnson previously claimed he would release the footage so people could see for themselves what happened on January 6th, but apparently he didn't mean without edits. Absolutely true completely indefensible, blatant, jarring hypocrisy from a man who is allegedly so intelligent. Now, the other thing I want to point out is in that press conference, again, he referred to the two Republican members of the House January 6th Select Committee as Republicans. He clearly doesn't think that they have their Republican bona fides. So just to put that in perspective, because I love a good fact check, rhetoric is one thing, but as they say, actions speak louder than words. So Let's compare the actions, the ultimate actions of an elected representative. It's their vote. We talked about this the other day, some of this anyway, in a, re in a recent video. Matt Gates, who is a strident, outspoken Trump supporter, according to 538, he voted with Donald Trump 85% of the time when Donald Trump is pre was president. 85% of the time. Not bad. Jim Jordan, another outspoken, strident Trump supporter, voted with Donald Trump when Donald Trump was president. 
88.7% of the time, about 89%. It's pretty good. Adam Kinzinger, who is one of the two Republicans, Republicans that Mike Johnson was besmirching, he voted with Donald Trump when Donald Trump was president more than Matt Gates and Jim Jordan at 90.2%. So not only was he a registered Republican, not only was he a Republican elected official, not only did he vote for Donald Trump to be president in 2020 when he cast his vote as a, a registered voter, he voted with Trump. He cast his official vote as a sitting member of Congress 90% of the time in line with Trump's agenda, more than Matt Gates and Jim Jordan. So how is he, if he's a Republican, if he's an air quote Republican, if he's a Republican in name only, then surely by definition, that means that Matt Gates and Jim Jordan are also rhinos, right? Because they voted with Trump even less than Kinzinger. But wait, there's more. Because then we have Mike Johnson himself. Mike Johnson, an outspoken Trump supporter, even though in 2015 he said Trump was unfit for office, that he lacked the temperament and the judgment to be commander in chief. And Donald Trump didn't change, but Mike Johnson did. Set that hypocrisy aside. He voted with Trump 92.8% of the time, more than Gates, more than Jordan, and yes, more than Adam Kinzinger. Okay, so by that definition, I suppose Mike Johnson is more of a Republican than um, Adam Kinzinger. That's true. But we got the Trump card, Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney, the second of the two rhinos slash Republicans that Mike Johnson besmirched, she voted with Trump just a little bit more than Mike Johnson did at 92.9% of the time when Donald Trump was president. So by Mike Johnson's own logic, by the actual tabulation of votes, he is more of a Republican in name only than Liz Cheney. There's no way to square this. Again, Mike Johnson ultimately loses the argument unless to Mike Johnson, the one and only qualifier for being a Republican is your personal loyalty to one person, which is Donald Trump, in which case that means that the Republican Party is indeed effectively a cult, which is what I and other progressives say. So no matter what, Mike Johnson ultimately loses the argument. It is inevitable. We always win. He always loses. Now, the other thing I want to point out is the Associated Press has a really good virtual tracker of Capital Rioters Face Legal Fates. That's what it's titled. And it's a virtual tracker of the progress of the January 6th prosecution. So uh, there have been 100, and, or excuse me, 1,202 people charged with offenses related to the attack on the U.S. Capitol. Of these, 881 have been convicted of crimes related to the attack. 307 are pending. One has been acquitted. 881 convicted. 13 other. So not entirely sure what that means, but... Uh, um, I guess it's some sort of acquittal, or cases were dismissed, it looks like, for 13 others, okay? And then of these 881, 729 have been sentenced for their participation in the attack. So I definitely encourage you to check that out if you want. Um, it looks also at their penalties, restitution, probation slash supervised release, imprisonment, community service, fine, home confinement. The January 6th, Capitol riots are, again, it's not even a matter of historical opinion. It's a matter, as far as the United States is concerned, of legal fact. We even discussed this in the recent Colorado case concerning Donald Trump's potential disqualification under the 14th Amendment. January 6th was an insurrection, not just in the opinion of legal scholars and historians, but also in the eyes of the American court system. Donald Trump himself, in the eyes of the American court system, is indeed an insurrectionist. And Mike Johnson is sweeping it under the rug. Of course, it makes sense because he actively supported the insurrection in spirit. He wanted Donald Trump um, to, you know, basically be installed as dictator for a second unelected term. Happily tried to get him litigated into a second term. Tried to sue, help Trump tried to sue his way into the White House. Um, so it seems pretty plausible that he also supports the insurrection in spirit. But utterly despicable. The Republican Party is officially no longer the party of law and order. They have no claim to the title. Anytime you see them or a sympathizer try to claim the title, you have so much to throw back in their face, including this. The GOP is not the party of personal accountability. It's not the party of law and order. It is a, an authoritarian cult, a personality with no limiting principle serving one man and one man only, Donald Trump. Let me know what you think in the comments.